What is going on, Jeff fans? Here are my top 12 ranked in order, but in three different tiers, preferences for the New York Jets in round one of the NFL draft. Coming up in three weeks here, let's get it going. Number one, I have two players in the tier I call go up and get them. Obviously not going to be there at 10, but there's two players that I would aggressively trade up for if they fall within striking distance. Marvin Harrison Jr., pretty much consensus, non-best, not best non-quarterback in the draft incredibly high floor just makes the difficult look easy routinely generational i don't know whatever word you want to use but he's that dude he is arguably the best wide receiver prospect since jamar chase and the eight the fast aj green comps hold ridiculous hip fluidity for a long lean wiry 6-4 receiver with great hands great route runner diverse release release package he can do it all, and he he changes your offensive life, life right away, and you know you're getting an incredibly high floor, very low risk pick. I would come up and get Marvin Harrison Jr. if he falls within striking distance of the New York Jets. Next, Malik Neighbors, I'd go up and get him too. Probably have a better chance. He has a better chance of falling to that five to seven range where you could realistically package something up to go trade for him, but the speed is unbelievable. And he runs those slot fades, <laughs> catching passes from Dane Dan Jane Daniels. He's going to rip the top off of defenses. And I think the way Miami uses Tyree Kill, I'm not saying he's Tyree Kill, but the way Miami leverages Tyree Kill's speed with that little orbit motion and the running head starts, and or, or he's going to either go deep or just peel it off into that, that dig route if it's middle field open, man, he just like Marvin Harrison Jr. would change your offense. And he could put this team, I know it's never about just one player or one missing piece, and we can give all the caveats to health and Aaron Rodgers and we're the Jets and we haven't proven anything, but I'm just telling you my opinion. And this is the kind of player where if you add Malik Neighbors to this offense, and man, I'm putting our roster up with anybody in the AFC not named the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, obviously, you'd have to go ahead and get a tackle, uh, at picks, maybe you could in the fourth round, maybe if you package pick 72, then you have to spin around and try and get David Bakhtiari or somebody to be your swing tackle. I understand that leaves you a little light with depth in the offensive line, but he's just that much of a difference maker. And I'm that confident he is going to be a really good football player right away. To me, he would be worth it to go up and get Malik Neighbors. Next tier of player is love him at pick 10. So these next couple guys, I would not aggressively trade up for. But if they're there at pick 10, I'm running to the podium. I'm not thinking twice about it. Joe Alt, offensive tackle, Notre Dame, my favorite tackle in the class, a mammoth 6'9 human with really good athleticism. Uh, I was impressed watching him with his run blocking, and I think he finishes pretty well. For I, I know he's known as more, at least I heard some people say he's more of a finesse player, but I think he does have some nasty to his game. A little stiff, I'd say. Uh, definitely not the most perfectly clean film as I anticipated from what I heard about him. But look, man, it's it, people are getting paralysis by analysis. I know now Mike March is saying he's a bum. The kid just turned 21 years old and he's a three year starter and he is the best tackle in the class. In my opinion, he could come in and fill the immediate position of need of, of a swing tackle. It probably, I don't know, play it maybe a third to half the season. And then you have your franchise left tackle moving forward. So I would not trade up for Joel, but if he's there at 10, I just think he's going to be the best player on the board at a position of relative need with Tyron Smith on a one-year band-aid Joel. I'd take him at 10. Ditto that Romo Dunze wide receiver Washington. I would sprint to the podium to take him at 10 as well. Probably would have been the wide receiver one in last year's class. Unbelievable hands. Not only hands, but catching the ball requires more than just good hands. <laughs> it requires tracking the ball in the air. Uh, yes, body control and balance. Yes, the ability to have late hands and bring the ball down through contact and through the ground. Unbelievable. Look at the drop rate, 3.2%. Contested catch rate, 75%. So... He doesn't separate like neighbors. He's not quite the doesn't have the release or the route running as Marvin Harrison Jr. Those are high bars. I'm not saying he's a slouch in those areas. Doesn't have the yak of neighbors. Nobody does. And if you're going to live 
with contested catches like he does, you're going to have to be elite at it. And he is elite, elite at it. And Aaron Rodgers loves himself some vertical back shoulder stuff. And I think he'd come in. He comes in. He starts in 11 personnel. And I, I don't know if rookie Romo Dunze isn't better than 30-year-old Mike Williams off the Achilles. I don't know if he's not wide receiver, too. I would take him at 10. No questions asked. Next tier, I have the trade back. Or, or I'm sorry. This is I could live with them at 10. So I'm not sprinting to the podium and dancing and, and pre-ordering the jersey. But I get it at 10. That's this next tier. Of player J.C. Latham, fine at 10. He's my second favorite tackle in the class. I feel the same way about J.C. that I did about Darnell Wright last year. Nobody wins through his chest. You have edge rushers that just give up and fall to their knees when they run into him. It's like a brick wall. And once he gets his hands on you, you're done. His grip, his grip is unbelievable. His lateral agility for a man his size is good. I don't want to hear about Beckton. He's 35 pounds lighter. He plays a different position. He's a whole different athlete. Um, gets, uh, getting beat across his face to counters. Yeah, th that's definitely a thing. Sometimes he oversets, uh, penalties are high some of the time because he's just, he's just so over ag aggressive and destroying people. He's got to chill a little bit and just take, take the win as a rep. But uh, I don't see a lot of penalties where, oh my gosh, I got toasted to the outside. So I'm grabbing a dude's face mask or pushing him in the back. And I do think he fits better with what is most likely going to be more of a power gap scheme with the Jets. I think he's just going to hold down the right side of an offensive line wherever he goes for the next decade. And that's me. I'm okay with that at pick number 10. Due to that, Olu Fushanu, very different stylistically to JC and playing on the left side. I think so, the same the same need of, of Joe Alt, right? Comes in, swing tackle, then future left tackle applies here i don't like him as much as joe alt i do think the run blocking is going to matter i do think he's a he just doesn't generate a lot of force in the run game he's not moving people he's kind of built weird where his hips are really high um even though joe alt is six nine I, I think joe alt is able to get better leverage and drive in my opinion but he is a clean pass protecting left tackle and he's got the tools to do it he reminds me a little bit of charles cross coming out a couple of years ago where he's not, there's not a lot of nasty and the run blocking leaves some to be desired, but he, he can mirror pass rushers. He's got good feet and probably if he had to start as a rookie would, would take it in the chops with some bull rushes. He's got to add some play strength, but he's young enough to where you feel okay with that. And after Tyron Smith retires, hopefully he's your DeBrickish off Ferguson, which is a, a, a popular comp of his ceiling, more of a finesse, pass blocking left tackle i would take i would take another to break a shot ferguson at 10 and be okay with it uh troy fatanu good with him at 10 too as well now i think he can play well i'll put it this way people who i trust right daniel jeremiah connor rogers believe he can play left tackle at the next level and the arm length checks out he does this his build just looking at him he doesn't look like a like an nfl tackle he looks a little small at the at his at the combine. I saw him running around in shorts and a t-shirt. He almost looked like a tight end or a fullback, right? Um, and the weight, you know, in the weight, he's in the like 15th percentile for weight for tackles. But the arm length is good, and he he does have lateral agility for days. And he, I've watched him. I've watched all but two of the guys on this list. We haven't gotten to them yet. He just glides. He like teleports. He's there, and then he's over there. Um, now. I do think what has him higher than some other players for me is that he does two crucial things for this team. Number one, he can back up four spots for you right away. Both tackle spots, both guards. So the kid's going to play. I mean, geez, if you're backing up four spots, what's he going to be out there? Ten games this year? Okay, so this is not some sort of red shirt situation by any means. Immediate impact there. And then if you think he could play left tackle, well, then he's giving you what, you know, Joe Alton, and Olu Fashanu are giving you as that future left tackle. Now, I don't think he's as good of a prospect as Joe Alt or Olu, Olu Fashanu or just as good of a tackle prospect in general as JC Latham. That's why he's here. But those are two really important things he could do for this team for the present and future. Uh, Troy Fatanu, I'm good with him at 10. I don't love it. It doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy inside, but I get it. I get it at 10. Now, uh, the last player that I get 
at 10 is Brock Bowers. And these are ranked in order in the tiers. So yeah, there's three offensive, there's three wide receivers and there are four offensive linemen. I like better than Brock Bowers, but I, I still think he is easily a top 15 player in this draft. And he, he's in the conversation, man. We got to just, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like I, I, he's going to join an NFL team and be a difference making playmaker right away, whether that's the jets or somebody else. And the Jets need a pass catcher is a need. So he and Tyler Conklin would start. Uh, I've said this a million times. Like we have Tyler Conklin. I understand that. That does not, that does not matter because he would play slot like Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid in Buffalo both played over 60% of the snaps. So he would come in and he would be a starter. Uh, and he's a yak machine. He would do really well with those short yak intended throws that Rogers loves. Doesn't drop a lot of passes this year. The contested catches were tough. We're, we're pretty it was a weakness. Now the, his first two years, that wasn't an issue. So I think if I saw more examples of him, at least in his 2023 film, I didn't watch before that of him winning down the field. Now I, I know I'm sure he has the athleticism in the hands to do it. I get that, but I just have like comparing him to a pass catcher like Romo Dunze. I have so many more examples of Romo Dunze winning how an X wide receiver wins in the NFL more than I do for Brock Bowers. Like people compare him to George Kittle. Well, okay, I see George Kittle, you know, going running a stick and nod and catching the ball between the linebacker and the safety all day long. Now Brock Bowers has those on his film. I get that. But half of his catches last year were at or behind line of scrimmage. So I would probably like a more volume of that for a guy I'm taking at number 10. But I get it at 10. I get it. I'm not mad about it. I'm not I don't feel as good about it as I would Odunze or Alt. I'm certainly not trading up for Brock Bowers, but there's a good chance that he is the best offensive player available at, at pick number 10 uh, in the opinion of, of Joe Douglas and the, and the guys making the decision. So he's in the cards, but he is, uh, I quantify Brock Bowers as like my least favorite option at 10 that I can live with, <laughs> which is a compliment dude. It's, you know, first tight end off the board for sure. Uh, now here's my trade back tier. Talisi Fuwanga, offensive tackle, or he maybe he could play guard. Now, to me, this is this is the advanced scouting terminology you, you come here for, right? But to me, he moves guardy. He moves guardy to me. And Troy Fontenot moves like a tackle. Okay. The now he has the measurables to play right tackle. He's got the strength. Foot speed, I question a little bit. And I do think maybe probably a better fit if this was 2021 Michael Four, uh outside zone. But if you're telling me you slide back to pick 13 and you turn pick 13 into Talisi Fawanga and a third round or, or, or you turn pick 10 into Talisi Fawanga and a third round pick, I'm fine with that. Probably come in and supplant Morgan Moses next year or, or and be back up both guard spots and right tackle as a rookie. So I'm fine with him. I would just prefer it not be at 10. I feel the same way about BTJ, Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver. Really like this player in the film I watched. A little bit of a one trick pony. Now it's a neat trick. Rip the rip the top off of your defense or pretend like I'm going to and sit down in a curl. His spray chart is a little more varied. So maybe if I watch more games, I'd see him do some more stuff. But this wide receiver class is, is awesome, man. And he would be phenomenal if you just trade back a little bit. I just think it's more of a compliment to the the gentleman ahead of him. Um, I think another in last year's class. You know, maybe he would be like wide receiver too, but probably the most impressive combination of size and speed one of in the class uh, because he's, you know, he's no stick at 200, 205, 208 pounds running a four, three, four, 17 touchdowns, the measurables and the, and the production speak for themselves. Uh, he'd come in and he would be a starter in 11 personnel. And then you're going to need an outside starting receiver next year when Mike Williams is probably not no longer on the team. So like BTJ, probably not a 10, but he is, you know, definitely worth a top 15 uh, for sure. 20 pick in the draft. Two more guys here. So these last two guys, I have not got a chance to watch their film, but Amarius Mims, I can't leave him out. This Goliath of a offensive tackle prospect who has got Raz score for days. I mean, seven foot three wingspan, six foot eight, 335 pounds. Where is it? Well, 11 inch hands and some of the caddies cut ups I've watched of him. He, he leaves feet 
he's got good feet too. He moves really well. Uh, I don't know. He is an interesting one. I think he could, like, if he is the second or third tackle taken, I'm not going to be shocked. And then if he falls to the to the very end of the first round, I'm not going to be shocked. I think GMs could be all over the place on him because he has such a limited sample size of film. But that was kind of Broderick Jones last year, too, who was pretty raw and ended up going top 15. And I think Amarius Mims has way more tools and traits than Broderick Jones, although he is competing with a, a deeper offensive line class this year. But Amarius Mims, definitely in a trade back. Oh, yeah. Then finally, in a trade back, do have to have a defensive player on the board. Let's be realistic. The Jets are not going to have, you know, the seventh wide receiver ahead of the best if their their best defensive player because it's not a position of need. So that one defensive player would be Byron Murphy for me. A defensive tackle who, I mean, look at this. Look at the analytics. My goodness. He is one of, uh, you see, he's in like the 95th plus percentile in pass rush win rate and run stop rate. He joins Quinny Williams and Jalen Carter as the only defensive tackle prospect of the last five years to that you could say that about. So yeah, he comes in and he starts next to Quinny Williams and you have Quinny Williams and this could be maybe 85, 90% of Quinnen. Yeah, that makes you, and you know, you're getting a dude right into your defensive line is one of those has such a high hit rate of the first guy off the board over the last decade. So perfect resource allocation, definitely not, but you're looking back and it's like, yeah, you got like, you got a pro bowl defensive tackle if you trade it back. So there it is. There's my top 12 subject to change probably a million times between now and, and uh, what do we got here? Hey, we're pretty close. The 25th. All right. Go Jets.